So I'm Dr. Vaishali Adya and I'm a postdoc here at ANU and working with undergraduate students on experiments like these. So at the moment we're trying to set up an OPO, which is an optical parametric oscillator, um, which we use in gravitational wave detectors to improve the sensitivity of the detector at various frequencies. So we can detect gravitational waves more efficiently. So an OPO can create these entangled states, um, which can then help us go below the um, quantum noise limit, which is the current noise that limits gravitational wave detection. What you see there is the main laser beam, that's the infrared laser mm -hmm. beam, um, and it comes in that way, so the Faraday isolator follows that path, and then comes in here, this way, and enters from the back here, and is resonant in this cavity, and then we've set up photodiodes to measure the transmitted um, infrared and to measure the reflected green. This is like the heart of the squeezing experiment, and this is our OVA. So if you can see, we have multiple laser beams coming from different tables onto this mm -hmm. table, but we want to make sure that the frequency of all of these lasers is the same. So you don't introduce frequency noise from one laser into your experiment. So we try to do a frequency lock between all of these different lasers, and we call that a phase lock loop. So we force one of the lasers to follow the frequency or phase of the other laser. And that's what we use the MOCO for. We take mm -hmm. the uh, laser beam coming from that table and beat it with the laser beam on this table uh, on a beam splitter. And we measure that beat with a photodiode and we pass that photodiode output into our MOCO and we look for the beat. So when it comes to this 80 megahertz and you say, lock, and that's locked now. Yes. Oh, it has been extremely useful because you have multiple instruments, so you can switch between different instruments depending on what you want to do. If you want to quickly look at a spectrum, then you can switch over to that one, or if you're interested in looking at um, a Bode plot, like a transfer function, then you can do that and measure like a, unit, a quick measurement of the unity gain um, frequency and things like that. So I find it very useful. Oh, we've had no issues for the frequency range that we're interested in, which is between like 100 hertz to a couple of kilohertz. We've had no problem at all.